I'll kick off with the conclusion to this video and I found that the Nest thermostat is a good thermostat with the potential to be absolutely brilliant. Um, it's not quite there yet, it's got a few teething problems, a couple of glitches, but they all could be easily fixed. So watch on, make up your own your own mind. Is it any good? Um, I would say the Nest is a good thermostat, but it has a few flaws that need to be ironed out. Um, and you know, it, it's a top end thermostat, you're paying top dollar for this thermostat, so really, um, you should be quite harsh when you're reviewing these things, you know, because it, it, it should be really good. Uh, is it really good? I don't think so, not yet. The advantage of it is though, is that it can be really good, it can be updated and the, the software can be changed uh, and you know so it's it's not fixed it can be changed so it's good in that way um, that you know you can buy this thermostat and you know if it, if it isn't good they can update that software they can change it they can manipulate it and you know so it, it can be a completely different thermostat from when you bought it so it's good in that way um, I've been using this, uh, if you go into the video you see it, that that's my old thermostat which truly is a wireless one, there's no wire there, you can see in the, the Nest is connected, it's always connected to, to power. Um, the Honeywell um, is, is a battery operated, these batteries last well over a year um, and it's, you know, it's great, this, uh, the Honeywell. What I would say is the Honeywell actually delivers heat more evenly than the Nest does. The Nest has a variance of 1 to 2 degrees, um, so it feels warm and cold in your house. It, it, you know, the, there's a big variance in temperature. It's, it's slow to react and, it, you know, it boosts uh, my system too much, so then the radiators take it up at least half a degree over what you've set it at so it should be able to compensate for that that the Honeywell does the Honeywell compensates well for that very rare for it to go over the temperature you've set it at because it switches my combi boiler off before it reaches temperature so there's a bit of um, variance there um, which which makes it a bit choppy. It feels a bit you know hot and cold. And for a top end thermostat, I would want it. Uh, you know, I want it smoother than that. I want it to be anticipating your heating and 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 learning from that. Uh, so maybe it's it's only a week old. It's only a week. So maybe it will get better as time goes on. I'll maybe do another wee tester about a month down the line, um, just to see um, if it's got better. Um, but saying that as as well, the the true radiance setting on the on the the Nest is bonkers. Really, it, it comes on hours before you need your heating on. So your house is roasting. You know, it's really really warm in your house for hours before you even get up. It, was, it came on something like two hours before. Um, so it's 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 learning how hot your how quickly your house heats up, but really it, it doesn't learn much. So it's it's I set my my heat for six thirty. So I mean it, it's coming on at half four in the morning when nobody's there. You, you know the house gets really warm. Uh, um, you can heat my house up an hour max. It needs you know, um, but it's 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 on two hours two hours in advance so I've, I've taken off the true radiance that doesn't that doesn't really work for me um, I'm running a, a, a combi boiler it's a wet system you know so it's, it's got radiators so um, and what I'm finding is it's not anticipating very well how quickly this place heats up even though it's got all I mean, I've put all the details in the size of the house and age of the house and you know all, all the details that are requests it's a uh, 
but it doesn't seem to be learning very quickly from that um, and, and, and for this sort of price range you'd expect it to be you know on the button and a bit slicker you know working a bit better but um, moving on to the, the, the that's the sort of negative side of it the positives are you know obviously you can control this thing from your phone from anywhere in the world basically you, you know you can you can uh, switch your heating on and off whenever you like um, it's got the auto away controls um, so it, you know it detects when you're not in your house and it will switch your heating off um, the only downside to that is of course is you, you come into a cold house because it doesn't detect if you're coming back and switch it on again but you know you can get round that with other apps um, the if this then that app uh, will take care of that for you but again that's a secondary app um, Farsight that is that, that is really good obviously it's detecting that I'm sitting here so it's keeping this screen on um, it's really good but I would like to see it the, the other way around in Farsight I'd like to see not what the heat set to but the, the actual temperature of the room and the heat setting up around the dial I think that would make would make more sense to me because uh, you know it's a thermostat I like to see what temperature it is in the room and the fact that it comes on as soon as you walk in front of it is great you know because you can see you can see what's going on um, the, the other screens would be better if, if they had a bit more information on them like the clock if, if that had the temperature on it for instance that would be uh, very useful it wouldn't take much to to update that to you know so that there's more information on the screen when it comes on um, or even just to have the choice to put more information on the screen there is no choice there you know if you've got the clock it's just the clock the clock and uh, if it's a digital clock it's just the digital clock and the date that, that's all there's no temperature there or anything you know having both would be good that would that would be better um, uh, good thing about the nest as well is it it looks it looks amazing. It's pretty amazing looking. Um, compared to the other thermostats, nothing really comes close to it. It's it's quite a change from from this guy here, which although this this is uh, not a bad looking thermostat. I don't know if you can see the screen now. It's very simple. Um, it will light up if you you press it. Um, so when you, when you target so this one keeps the room temperature on it all the time you can see what temperature your room is uh, whenever you look at it which is useful um, but you know it's a big upgrade in, in looks this this is a sort of traditional looking uh, thermostat sort of thing you'd want you usually see on your wall good thing is this is wireless so you can hide it but you know it doesn't have to be on your wall you can hide it in places um, so it's not too bad, but you know it's nothing compared to the Nest. Also, the the functionality and the ease of use of the Nest is fantastic. It really is uh, easy to use. It's it's you know this dial thing. It's a a great idea just to be able to turn your heating up and down. It's brilliant, and then it goes bright orange when it when it comes on. You know, so it's like you know you know that that's your heating's on. It's very you know. It, it's great, you know, it's very simple, clear, it's got a great big good screen. Um, but yeah, basically, I would say, if you've got one of these, there's not going to be much difference in the savings that you will achieve um, because of this temperature radiance thing. This uh, the, the Nest keeps your, your, your heating on, I would say, a bit long, longer than it needs to. Um, so you might find you're actually using more gas if you have a schedule that you're in the house a lot. Um, this, the Honeywell, will do the job, no problem at all. Um, if you've got a, a sort of uneven schedule, like you, you know, you don't know when you're going to be out for long periods of time, the Nest comes into its own then because it will automatically shut off your heating so long as you've you, you've you've set up their way. Um, so that it knows uh, to switch off if you're not in the house um, and also obviously you can switch it off from your app from anywhere um, so it's it's good in, in that respect and uh, it's, 
useful useful for um, if you want to switch your heating off uh, if you don't have a thermostat um, fitted already to your boiler the nest is a great option it uh, will save you money it's probably the way to go um, if you've got the money I would get one because it's, it's sort of future proof it, it can be updated you know so it'll, it'll last you for years um, the Honeywell one, you're sort of stuck with the software, although it's it's excellent software, it's good. What I find the thing lacking for me is the ability to be able to switch that off when I'm not home. Um, you know, the Honeywell, you need to be in front of it to control that at all. Whereas the Nest, you can be anywhere, whether there's a computer, Wi-Fi, you know, uh, cellular, wherever you wherever you are, you can you can. Uh, adjust this thing and you can change the temperature it's great for that, it is great so if you don't have one connected to your boiler you know and you've got the money I would I would get a nest and connect that to my boiler you'll find massive difference in your gas, your energy bills um, the amount of energy that you actually use uh, because it, uh, you know although it's got like that heat variance that you keep talking about it's still very very good. And if you want to find out more about the conclusions I've come to, you can watch the rest of the video, which will show you, you know, uh, three days in and eight days, eight days on, uh, my, my uh, findings with with uh, the thermostat. Now, obviously, it's still learning, so uh, I might do a wee update in a few weeks just to see how this has been going here we have the nest the third generation um, wireless thermostat system thermostat has a box at the boiler which is very similar to the nest one and uh, it shouldn't be a problem swapping these over so if you've already got a wireless thermostat it should be pretty easy to upgrade to, to one of these um, whether it's worth upgrading or not that remains to be seen um, at the moment I'm using a Honeywell wireless thermostat uh, this is a CM927 um, this is a great thermostat actually it's really good uh, it gives you um, seven day programmable six different times for every day of the week the only thing it doesn't really have is, is a wireless so like if for some reason you come home late or uh, you're away for you know longer than expected it still heats your house even though you're not in it so I'm going to give the, the nest a try and see if that's uh, a better setup. there we go Parts that we really need. So, if you go in here, we have some instructions for the look of it. This is good, I'll have a wee read at that. But here is the very thing we need. Now, this. This is the controller, this is where it gets fitted next to the boiler. This is a part that acts as basically a switch, it's a wireless switch. Um, your thermostat will tell this to switch on and off and this will switch your boiler on and off. Simple as that. This uh, third generation Nest comes with a uh, hot water side as well. I don't actually need that, so basically there's two switches inside this instead of just the one. So it's uh, yeah, pretty simple. There's uh, you just need to connect this. I've already got a, a box for my old thermostat. It looks very similar to this uh, for receiving the signal from my existing thermostat. So all I'm doing is swapping this one for the the old one, and then we should be able to get these two 
these two parts to, to tie up and communicate with one another and then that's it set up um, pretty easy uh, there is a wiring diagram I think it's yeah so it tells you how to install the heat link and it's got this wiring diagram now for me it's just a case of connecting the live and the neutral so it was those two terminals and uh, the common and the call for heat so it's it was basically two cables um, going into numbers two and three and the live and the neutral I don't actually have an earth um, so that was basically it uh, and that, that, that's it connected up and it's working so it was basically four wires your live and neutral supply and the call for heat and the common and that's it it's, it was very easy obviously mine's has been set up for a wireless one um, and it's just a matter of taking them out one wireless uh, receiver and putting them into the this heat link but as I say everybody's got different setups I don't have hot water there's terminals for hot water there's, there's all sorts of things so um, you need to be pretty clear how your setup is um, before you tackle it unless you're used to doing these things already um, yep. the instructions are pretty good uh, nice and easy to follow uh, there's no really any uh, difficulties with it at all and it's got quite a lot of different setups uh, to, for you to, to see uh, using this thermostat for uh, about five years I would say it's a CM927 this is a great thermostat really is excellent reliable and it gives you a nice consistent heat um, through the house and this is the nest that's, um, I've had working for probably uh, three days it's been running for now now obviously the nest is what they're calling a learning thermostat so it's supposed to learn as you're going along um, it's the winter time and we're in Scotland so it gets pretty chilly so what I've done is I've, I'm not using it, uh, turning it up and down as needed as they, they say you should do for the first week what I've done is I've put in my own schedule so it actually comes on in the morning so that the house is warm for us getting up now I had this uh, setting here True Radiant it's called Set Up um, to come on and obviously we've only been using it for a couple of days but uh, what I was finding was that in the morning with True Radiant set on I set my I set it for coming on at 6.30 now the heating was actually coming on about two hours before 6.30 so it was <laughs> you know it was coming on at a ridiculously early time so basically the house is roasting by the time you're sort of ready to get up and I found that just to be a bit much, you know, maybe if it came on half an hour before or something that'd be fine, but you know, two hours is, is a long time, sort of the middle of the night. What I've seen is the, the temperature overshoots, as you can see that says 21 and it says 21.5 and you can feel that actually it's warmer, uh, sometimes this will reach 22. And this is still saying 21. So I think what's happening as well, it sort of overshoots, so it takes it, it takes the heat right up to 21 and a half before it even sort of shuts it off, shuts off your boiler. So what you get is a sort of undulation of heat, sort of very warm, uh, and then it gets quite chilly before it actually switches back on again. So I know it's still learning, but um yeah, really noticing the difference between the Honeywell um, because this one really keeps your heat steady it sort of calculates out the rate that the heat's rising and it will then switch off your boiler before it reaches a temperature 
which then allows the radiators to radiate their heat and it, you know so the radiators are carrying it up to the temperature rather than having the boiler on until it reaches temperature which will then push it over uh, the actual temperature that you're wanting. Um, now this is a learning thermostat so hopefully it will learn but from what I've seen so far the the uh, Honeywell's you know better at actually controlling the heat in your house uh, when it's when it's on. The only thing the the Nest is good at is um, Wi-Fi, and that's only because the Honeywell doesn't have any Wi-Fi. So you can control this out your house as well as when you're in it. So that if you forget to switch it off, you can switch it off. You know, all the things that Wi-Fi provide for you. But basically, um, from what I've seen so far, the Honeywell actually does a better job of keeping your house a consistent temperature. Um, you can see there that that's now at 22, whereas this is a, it's 21 and a half, and it's set to 21. So it's it's went over the temperature, and usually you find that this is more sensitive than than the the Nest. The Nest is quite slow to react to the temperature. Um, this one's a bit better at taking the temperature because um, you can feel that actually although that's set to 21 I've had this one set to 21 it wouldn't be as warm as it is just now um, obviously I've had a lot of experience with the, the Honeywell um, and I know what temperature is, is good for us and this is set for the same temperatures but it's set, it definitely pushes it higher at the moment now it's only been running for uh, three days now, that's three days. So we'll give it another few days and we'll see how it goes. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely uh, not a big fan of, of the True Radiant. I mean this, this can do the True Radiant thing as well. This can uh, come on early to heat up your house uh, so that it's at temperature for you for the time that you request it so this can do pretty much all the stuff the nest can do the only thing it doesn't do is is the wi-fi it's a week the nest has been connected to the heating system now um, and is it good i don't know as a the energy use reports that it does. Um, now I've got a wood burning stove. Um, so we've got a wood burning stove and in the living room where we keep the, the the nest. Now what it said to me was on that day that the energy use was less because of the weather. Now the, uh, there is no option for putting in alternative heat sources into the setup menus. Maybe that, that should be something to think about because um, basically the weather on the day we used the stove was uh, basically it was colder outside by about 8 degrees it was down to 2 degrees uh, between uh, 0 and 2 on that day uh, the rest of the week had been about 8 degrees 8 to 10 degrees um, and basically what the report says is that I used less energy on that day due to the weather so you know, even though it detected it's colder outside, it's saying we use, you know, for some reason the house got really warm. It must be due to the weather, which uh, isn't very smart, in my opinion. But you know, it's another thing to think about, is maybe they need to have, uh, you know, let the nest know that there's there's an alternative heat source in the house that isn't the because to say the weather was you know heating the house up more when it was eight degrees less than it had been the rest of the week um i would say that was a glitch in the software you know i think it's using more energy than it has to because it's not anticipating the rise so it's taking me over the temperature that i'm i'm, I'm setting it at so i'll be actually using more energy than i will with the than uh, with the honeywell um so you know the energy savings are negligible if at all, it looks great. It works. It works well. You know all that. All the other functionality works really well. 
what I would say is the far sight is, is pretty good as well, but it could do with a bit more information on the screen, and that, that should be easy enough, easy enough to change. You know, when the clock comes up like that, really you want to see your temperature as well. A wee temperature thing at the bottom there, I mean, how difficult would that be to put that in? Same as this as well, when, when you set it up for temperature in the far sight, it comes up with a big 16. It doesn't actually tell you the, the temperature of your room. Now, I'd rather see the temperature of the room rather than the temperature it's set to. Um, it's just a personal personal preference, but you know, you, you've got a thermostat there. Why not use it as a thermostat, you know, to tell you the actual temperature uh, in the room. Um, it's good to see how long your boiler has been on. That is a good thing to see um, how many hours a day that you're actually burning uh, fuel for. Um, so it's it's not all bad, um, but it's got a way to go before it's it's running slick. And this is a third generation, really. Um, I would have thought they would have had a lot of this stuff ironed out by now. Um, so. Anyway, I hope this is useful for anybody thinking about buying one. Um, you know, obviously, if you don't have a thermostat on your boiler at all, this will be fantastic. You will save money uh, with this thing. And, you know, the control it gives you is pretty good. Um, although I would say sometimes, the, you know, it, it has got a few glitches. It needs to be a wee bit slicker. It's It's... You know, a few things are a bit patchy. The stuff like uh, uh, the automatic away system and stuff, it takes about two hours before it, it decides that you're not in the house, so it switches your heating off. Um, which is a good thing, but remember, you, you're coming into a cold house then. It doesn't switch on until somebody comes into the house. Uh, so it, it sort of bypasses all your schedules, and it just keeps your heating off. So you need to remember to switch that on on your way to the house or just wait until you, you come into the house. Um, but obviously when you're away you can set the temperature you know, to a sort of reasonable level, maybe about, I don't know, 16 or 18 and it won't let it fall below that. But yeah, apart from that it's, it's, it's you know, it's okay. I wouldn't say it was fantastic. It's, it's an okay thermostat, it does an okay job, there is mega room for improvement and the good thing about it is it can be up improved by uh, downloads over the air downloads so it's, it's sort of, you know, the, 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 there's nothing stopping all these glitches being fixed and this becoming a super slick, uh, you know, uh, useful thermostat. So that's my experience with the, the Nest thermostat so far, We're using it on a combination boiler, using a wet system with radiators um, in a reasonably cold country um, with the outdoor temperature being about, on average, probably about 8 degrees. Um, it's been pretty good. You know, the, the few annoying things obviously highlighted in the video, but you know, apart from that, it's it's a pretty good thermostat, um, and it'll be brilliant uh, once these uh, small glitches are, are taken care of, and uh, it's just running a bit smoother, a bit slicker. But hopefully, this will be some sort of help to decide whether to buy one or not. Um, is it worth buying? Probably, I think you know it's uh, these are the the future really. You know, the, um, to be able to control your house while you're not in it, you can actually do things while you're not there. Um, it's pretty useful uh, in that respect, and um, been able to update over there is is very useful um, because different functionality will be added in, and you know. Uh, it can always be improved. So hopefully, hopefully this is useful for some of you.